here from Camelback to talk about our Eddy collection and give you some tips on how to use it. The top of every Eddy bottle features our bite valve. The bottle is also designed so you don't have to tip it back when you drink. When you're finished, you just click it down and you don't need to worry about it spilling because it's spill proof. So as you can see, our Eddy collection comes in a variety of colors and sizes. We have all the way from one liter down to this cute little kid's bottle. All of our Eddy bottles come in a variety of materials from insulated and BPA-free plastic to stainless steel and even glass. So to wash the Eddy bottle, you can just unscrew the cap, remove the straw and the bite valve, and wash them with warm soapy water. If you have a dishwasher, you can put the bottle and the cap in the top rack and the straw and the bite valve in the utensil area. And all our products are covered by our Got Your Back Lifetime Guarantee. We built it, we'll back it. And that's the Eddy Collection from Camelback. Kate and I have been best friends since law school and we had the idea for Beaker when we were working as lawyers. Water has always been a part of our skincare regimen, the foundation, really. Skin that is hydrated from the inside is naturally more luminous skin. We set out to create something so beautiful that it could change the world. At its core, Beaker is a thoughtfully designed, minimalist glass water bottle with a soft silicone sleeve. In its evolution, it's become the beauty essential that will change the way you hydrate forever. You need them for all the different parts of your life, the big on your desk or at yoga, the little every day in your bag, when you're traveling, in your car, by your bed, and the teeny can go in your micro bag when you're on the go. There's something magical about a beaker bottle. It has a small mouth, it feels soft in your hand, and it's glass, so it doesn't change the taste of anything you're drinking. Our customers have formed an emotional attachment to their beaker. They tell us they're in love, they're obsessed with it. It's their favorite possession. They never thought a water bottle could bring them so much happiness. It makes them want to drink water. Having a beaker and really loving it has changed the way people hydrate.
We all got together here today on this boat to look at the, the distribution of, of plastics, microplastics, nanoplastics in the, uh, the San Francisco Bay, We're trying to figure out how much is there and where it's coming from. So we've known about litter and larger pieces of plastic for a long time, but only more recently have we realized that these teeny tiny plastic particles can cause some big impacts. The San Francisco Bay is a great place to be a laboratory for plastic pollution because we have a really dense urban population and we have a bay geography that traps persistent contaminants like plastic. So, I mean, every watershed is contributing to this one singular ocean. So, you know, really getting a handle on, on the issue here, understanding where it's coming from, and framing that in the context of the global issue, the global distribution, the global impacts, the fact that we find microplastics in over 1,000 different species, the fact that microplastics are sponges for all these hydrophobic pollutants. That is the harm, the potential for harm out there. And if we can get a handle on it here, we can ensure that San Francisco and this entire bay isn't a major contributor in the future. So first we're going out into the bay and we're collecting baseline data on microplastic particles in the surface water, in the sediment at the bay bottom, and in small fish that live in the bay. We're also traveling out the Golden Gate to the marine sanctuaries to monitor water there. We're going to take all that data and we're going to create a particle tracking model that can track or predict where plastic will end up when it moves out of the bay and into the ocean environment. We're also looking upstream. We want to see where the plastic comes from. So we're looking at the water that gets discharged to the bay. Now that includes wastewater, so that's all the down the drain uh, water that we have in our homes, our urban environments that goes to the wastewater facility. And then we're also looking at all the stormwater runoff when the wet season comes here in the bay and storms wash all kinds of contamination from our urban ways into streams and creeks. We're looking at that to see what kind of microplastic particles might be in there. Now all this information is going to get plugged into a big discussion and recommendations for action. So we're trying to create science that's going to be very influential and informative to help us choose the best actions to prevent plastic pollution, whether it's a, a government agency or a policymaker, a business that's designing products, or an individual. We'll have all the data that we need to make the best next steps for reducing plastic pollution.